Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and welcome back to the second episode of Valley America. Now, as I said last episode, this originally was going to be a collab part between Jasmine and I. And as I said before, Jasmine's just got a lot of other projects she's working on. So I'm just going to be building most on this part. She might build some, but she's definitely helped me out with some so far. And these episodes are going to go where I just have an update video. And then later on that week, there will be one to two speed build videos. Now, I will say most of this coaster I did not get on speed build. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just kind of messing around with it. And then I end up keeping the layout. And so I've got to do some custom supports over there. But it's not exactly like Gatekeeper, but it's inspired by Gatekeeper. Let's say that. Um, a lot of the elements that are the same. Um, but there are definitely some updates this episode that are really cool. As you can see, we've definitely got an actual um, entrance building, like buildings around the entrance area. Everything's more sectioned off. And thank you to Jasmine. We have this wonderful these planters, this foliage with these planters. But let's go ahead and start out over here. So I might add a Valley America sign right there. We'll see. But I like adding the trees and foliage because it kind of creates a little bit more of a grand style entrance. Also, this fencing, really easy to make. It's about seven pieces per. Um, and so as you can kind of see that that fencing piece is just, um, I just hide it in the poles so that you don't see those um, rounded things. But that's similar to like the fencing that you'll see outside of Val Raven, just the, the posts are different. Um, with Val Raven, it's more of a rough brick instead of those um, kind of steel. But so we've got the stoplights here, North Planko, I'll change the name to that. So this will be valley america drive if it can't fit that on the thing it'll just be valley drive and so we head this way and this is where the employees are going to go now here is the employee building entrance i chose the same color as the main entrance area up there and gosh these ghostbuster things are just perfect like it is so perfect to look like a key card that you're scanning like just insane and so there's the little little house for the employees there and what I did is I actually I can't remember if these were on episode one but I added these kind of um, like I said this might have been episode one so I, I apologize if I forgot but those kind of turns not turnstiles whatever those gates are called opening up um, and didn't do that for buses just because it'd be so far it'd be a lot lower but also added those scanners to where you could just scan it and you don't always have a lady there checking although gosh she looks quite ghastly like i did not mean to do that um but yeah i started using these animatronics and trying to vary up the colors and stuff like that um and also they're going since it technically is a cedar fair park they're going to all wear the blue and khaki pants throughout the park. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. So we head in this way. You've got some cones and stuff there. Also got some cones here just in case they need to block off a certain lane and stuff like that. Um, I might have to put a little fencing here just to kind of separate the two, but we'll see. And then we now have numbered spots. And if we look at, take a look at nighttime, these actually give off really good lighting. So the parking lot is actually lit up a lot better than a lot of theme park parking lots. So that's one thing I noticed going to theme parks this summer was they do not light up their parking lot. Um, I mean, maybe it's not everywhere, but at least Kings Island and Cedar Point were not that well lit up. I didn't go to Kentucky Kingdom or Holiday World at night. Um, but yeah, so the only thing that I should have done, and I'm not changing this because this would be a pain in the you-know-what, is I probably should have started A here since this would technically be a little bit more on the priority parking side. But yeah, so Jasmine did a great job with all this foliage. And these custom planters were kind of a pain in the butt. Just well, it's not it's not custom pieces, but creating it as a unique kind of look just because of the strange awkwardness of where um shape of that. 
So then we head this way, and we've got different colored buses. So nothing's changed over here. Everything's still the same. You can see the fence going around. Um, the pavilion, I mean, you don't really get views necessarily at the first drop, but you are going to get some views right here. Um, and obviously, if you're sitting over here, I mean, you're not able to see anything anyways. So um, it's okay that it's covered up by trees and stuff. So then we head this way, and I don't really know what I'm going to do yet with this backstage. I'm just kind of trying to figure out some other um, things first. But this is going to be, did I put a sign up? This is going to be like guest relations or something. Um, and so I put up a Planet Coaster sign there, which in theory would be um, tickets, stuff like that. Or um, if you need like anything other than tickets, my bad. So then over here we got the ticket booth. And one thing that I did that I think was I like the idea of it, and I got this this part or this idea a little bit from Cedar Point, how they kind of do theirs, um, how they've kind of modeled their buildings on the outside. That's how I kind of did this with with this extra ledge right here, which I just doubled it up because if there's only one, oh sorry, if there's only one, it was, it's pretty thin. So I just doubled that up and then put a little piece on the outside to to give it that cool kind of look. So we got a little bit of little bit of stuff on the rooftop, a um, little bit of stuff here in the backstage. Once again, I mean, doesn't that look so good? That looks awesome for like a little key card reader for employees and stuff, and you know, got to do the cables and so forth going around. Um, cables going up from that machine. So I think I'm done with this backstage. Like I don't think I'm going to really do much more. There might be a couple little things here and there. But I wanted to make sure and create gates for the staff. But here's what I may be the... Oh, my bad. Let me go back to this. But one thing I was saying that I didn't quite get to is to have this part be the color of kind of the style of this building. But then on the sides, kind of have it be a gray or even a lighter color. Like you see almost three different colors here. And so that was kind of intentional because guests aren't going to be noticing that as much. Um, so I kind of like that, how that ended up working out. But this is one of my favorite things that I've honestly done in any park, just to add the realism, is adding these gates. Because anybody who's been to theme park knows you walk through security gates before you actually walk through the entrance to the park. So the only thing that I might have to change is I need to add an exit. So I might change this one to just have a couple fences to be like an, an exit only. And then same thing here, like an exit only or something like that. Um, but we'll get around to that in a little bit. And then Jasmine did the foliage here. And really good job she did with these trees. Um, so it doesn't really even block too much, which is good. Yeah, so then we walk this way, and then we head into the park. And now Jasmine placed this here, which I do love this in this location. I just might do something a little bit different with the pathing for this. Um, but this is where she started to kind of place stuff around. Um, I like to make sure it's on a grid. So I might do that a little bit different, but we'll see. And I do like the look of this kind of coming right over the entrance. I think it provides a really good look and style. As I said, I might do something different with the buildings here just to create a little bit more of like um, walk-in buildings and so forth. And then what we started doing or what we kind of decided was how we wanted the pass to kind of go. So the thought in here is that this would be kind of the kids area of the park. Um, like the Planet Snoopy type, if you would, in terms of like Cedar Fair. Um, so this would kind of be the kids area of the park. And then obviously you'd have a thrill, maybe another thrill flat ride or two back here. And maybe like three main areas. So you got this main area, you got something back here and over here. Um, I don't know what coasters yet are going to be in this park. As I said, it can't be anything too large. You know, might do a dive coaster, but a smaller dive coaster. Um, so we'll see. I do kind of want to have some kind of story and back backstory with each ride as to why they're here in the park. And then this is where I was thinking for the main backstage, just with a couple warehouses, um, maybe along here having a having a office building. We'll see though. 
We will see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to go over before we take a ride on the coaster. Yeah, we'll watch it fly through the keyholes here in a second. Um, for anybody who's been on Gatekeeper, it is such a crazy, <laughs> like, um, head chopper type experience going through, um, going through those areas. But yeah, so Jasmine and I made the decision to change the color of the coaster to this kind of teal, and I really like it. Um, she was the one who came up with that color scheme of like the teal and gray, and I just think it works really, really well. So let's see. Here it comes. Perfect. And I have checked. Believe me, I have checked, and it everything is good. <laughs> because sometimes if you're on the coaster, it looks like you could possibly hit something. Um, let me come through this way. Woo. Yep. Really, really good. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And... I'm pretty happy overall with this layout. There's a couple parts I might need to smooth a little bit more. But overall, I am happy with it. And if there's nothing... I'm trying to think. Sorry if there's anything else to talk about <laughs> um, for this. But remember, speed build video is going to be out this week. There's just one of them. Um, last week there was two, but this time there's just one of them. But I really, really love how how this is looking and how this parking lot's kind of sh um, shaping out to be and taking form. And especially once we kind of fill out the park more and get some stuff over here, it's going to have a really, really good look um, from this way. And I have already grouped a lot of pieces together. So as you can see here, that's 2,700 pieces. And then I've got this part here, which is, 766 then also we've got that building which is 800 but what I really like oh I copied all this so let's see actually okay, I need to cover that up there we go so if you look at the Carowinds entrance um, They've got this kind of corrugated roof. I wish they gave us corrugated roofs in the game. It's really aggravating that they didn't. So essentially all this is, is a... Um, this took a while, and I think this is all in the speed build. So these are all large rectangles. These are scaffolding posts that are just colored gray. And then like for areas right here, so you got the large one... But then we got a small and so forth. So we got a small rectangular piece. So the idea was I made one and I was able to copy it to each side, although this one copied differently. So there's a it was a little bit of a tedious process, but overall I am really happy with how it turned out. I just think it's one of those a lot of people might not notice, but if you do notice, I think it adds it just adds to the look and the realism of that style of, of building with that roof. Um, but yeah, so now let's go ahead and end this episode taking a ride on the coaster. So we'll look at that one that's on the lift hill. If we just look at these stats real quick. I don't care about everything being all green. Um, G-forces look good. Biggest drop 136 feet. Max speed 66 miles per hour. Five inversions, one airtime count. So thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you next week.